before I get started in chapter four, graphing quadratic functions. Uh, we worked with quadratics a little bit this year, uh, at least you should be familiar with it, but now we're going to really get specific into chapter four. And so uh, just some things you need to know right here in the pa uh, middle of page 219, all right? It starts talking about some things you need to know. You need to know that the quadratic term is always x squared, and it has a coefficient in front of that. We call it a. The linear term is just x to the first power, and we put a b in front of it for its coefficient. And the constant term is just c. So ax squared plus bx plus c is standard form for a quadratic function, okay? And it's important to note that a can't be zero because if a is zero, it's not quadratic anymore, all right? Um, the graphs that quadratics make are called parabolas, and you probably know that. So we're going to have to get into some graphing, all right? And we're going to pay attention to the instructions here, but it's really pretty simple to do. So in example one, it tells us to um, graph this function, which is f of x equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 6, all right? And it wants us to graph this by making a table of values. So I'm just doing this example 1 on page 219. So <clears throat> there's going to be various ways to graph this. You learned uh, in the last chapter that there's a way to graph these by transformations, but you can't do that in standard form for a quadratic. All right, so when we go set this up, and when we go um, make or graph this via table, all right, I'm going to go into y equals in my calculator, and I'm going to plug in this equation, this quadratic function, 3x squared minus 12x plus 6. Okay, and we're going to go to the table, so I'm going to hit second graph, all right? And really what we want to do is we want to find points on both sides of the vertex. So here's what the graph ends up looking like. This bottom is a vertex. It's called a minimum here because it's at the bottom. But we're going to pick that point or something close to it and then points on either side. Okay. So, so it looks like that, that point is somewhere um, around negative six. Okay. So you can see in my table where it's at. So I'd kind of scroll down. But at negative six, it looks like that's my low spot. And then I start getting some negative threes. I start getting some sixes, it goes to 21. You can notice those values match up for the whole numbers. That's not ironic. We'll get a little bit more into that as we go. All right? But as I go graph this, generally when we're graphing a quadratic function, we want to graph the vertex and then two points on either side. If you ever want to get a good guess where the vertex is, you can just look at the graph, okay? And you can go trace it and get close just so you kind of know, you know, obviously it's somewhere here near two or three and somewhere near negative five or negative six. And we go to our table. Since it's a whole number, it works out nice for us. And we see that it's at 2, negative 6 right there. I know a little bit tough to see the calculator. All right. So at 2 and negative 6, I have my vertex. So I'm going to graph a point or two points on either side of that. So I'm going to go graph 1, negative 3, and 3, negative 3. So 1, negative 3, and 3, negative 3. Again, notice how those points match up. Kind of, it's like they're... They're both the same distance, kind of from this in terms of left and right. That's not ironic. We'll get there. Okay. You can see the y-intercept is 0 and 6, which, by the way, that was this plus 6 on the problem. When it's in standard form, your constant is your y-intercept. All right. So that's another nice thing to know. And then I'm at 4, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Again, note that I had multiple values with the same y, which is okay. This is a function. The x's are different. When we draw the graph, it's a parabola. So we're going through the points when we draw it like that. So that's just graphing by table. You can use a table in Desmos. It's not too hard, all right? Uh, we'll be working with Desmos a little bit, so I'll show you how this goes as it gets going. But that's pretty simple, okay? Um, if it ever has you, uh, has you list the table, okay, just list the points that you use. I don't think that's hard at all, okay? So there's example one on page 219. All right, let's go up top of page 220, get into some more terminology. All right, so every parabola has something called an axis of symmetry. So remember, if something is symmetrical, it can be split down the middle, and it's the same on both sides. Our axis of symmetry for a parabola right here at the top of page 220 goes right through the vertex, okay? So what we're going to have to start doing is writing an equation for the axis of symmetry. All right, so come down. I would say this key concept box in 220 is very important to have down, all right? So what we can do is we can find the y-intercept, we can find where the axis of symmetry is, and then we can reflect that point to as far away. If, if a point is so many units away from the axis of symmetry, if it's left however many units, then we can go right however many units, and we can plot that point. So we got vertex, We've got a reflective point with our y-intercept. 
we got our axis of symmetry. All right, so here's what you need to know as we get down into this stuff, all right? You can find the equation for the axis of symmetry right here, and it's x equals the opposite of v over 2 times a. b and a referring to standard form for a quadratic function, all right? The x coordinate of the vertex is that negative v over 2a. So the axis of symmetry is a vertical line, so it's x, it's x equals, and then that same number is going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. So you can kind of keep that in mind. There's some notes right here at the bottom of 220 that I'm not going to do, but it shows you if you're given this x squared plus 6x minus 2, how to find the axis of symmetry, which ends up being negative 3 right there. And you can see in this final graph that the vertex is negative 3, negative 11, and we have that axis of symmetry going through the vertex. All right, So let's kind of work that as we go to example 2 at the top of page 221. Again, example 2 says this. It says consider f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 3. Remember, f of x just means output, or it's our dependent. It's just telling us that we're dealing with a function here, okay? So it's x squared plus 4x minus 3, and then part A tells us to find the y-intercept, all right? The axis of symmetry, I'm just going to write A of S, the equation for the axis of symmetry, and the x-coordinate of the vertex, all right? So we've got some things that we got to find. The y-intercept, the axis of symmetry, and the x-coordinate of the vertex. Since this is in standard form, we already know that the y-intercept is at negative 3. Now, you can put it like that, but you need to understand the y-intercept is an ordered pair. That ordered pair is 0, comma, negative 3. So you might have to answer it either way. Like you can just say the y-intercept is negative 3, or it's the point 0, negative 3. All right, so to find the axis of symmetry, yes, we can use a calculator to help us find where the vertex is, but I want to introduce you to x equals negative v over 2a. So the axis of symmetry is this equation, knowing what v and what a are, okay? So I need to write this up here so that we got it in our notes. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c for a quadratic equation, all right? So we talked about that right when I first started talking, but I'm using these concepts to help me find the equation for the axis of symmetry. So let's plug it in. So b in this instance is going to be positive 4, and a in this instance is the number in front of x. Since there is no number in front of x, it's assumed to be 1. So we're going to plug it in. So I'm going to have the opposite of 4. Okay, again, it was positive 4. If you need to plug that in in parentheses to be careful, that's fine. And then I'm going to do 2 times a. Again, a is the number in front of x squared, or the coefficient with x squared, and that's 1. It's pretty simple math right here. The opposite of 4 is negative 4. 2 times 1 is 2, and then I can clean that up. And negative 4 over 2 divides to negative 2. So here's what that means. That means the coordinate for the axis of symmetry, excuse me, the, the uh, equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. You have to put that as an equation. Don't just write 2. It's a line, so we have to write the equation. It's a vertical line that goes through the x coordinate of the vertex. We found it to be x equals negative 2. Now, the x coordinate of the vertex, you can just put negative 2 there. Sorry, make note, make sure you put x equals negative 2 right there. Okay, x equals negative 2. Equation for your axis of symmetry. All right, now this says to make a table of values that includes a vertex. That's fine, you can do that, but we're ready to go graph this, okay? We're ready to go graph this. Now, as we do it, we probably need to double check where the vertex is, okay? So we can do this in, in, in several ways. I can get back into y equals all right, I can clear out what's in there, and we can put in the equation. The equation, again, is x squared plus 4x minus 3. All right, we can go look at the graph. You can see where the vertex, we already know that the x coordinate of the vertex is negative 2. It's down here somewhere, so I go to the table, and when x is negative 2, y is negative 7. Now, you can do it by hand. You could plug in negative 2 for x into the equation and solve, but the calculator is helping us out right there. So I know the vertex is at negative 2, negative 7. All right, there's my vertex. So let's graph what we know. I know the axis of symmetry, when we do an axis of symmetry, it's a dotted line. Is this line at x equals negative 2? I know the vertex is this point right here, negative 2, negative 7. Okay, good reminder from transformations, x squared is positive, so I know this graph is going to open upwards. I know that my y-intercept is 0, negative 3. All right, so here's kind of, let me show you how we can find the intercept to do another point. 
Okay. Do you see how the intercept is two units to the right of my axis of symmetry? That means I can go two units to the left and put another dot there. Now you'll notice that point is negative four, negative three. Well, look at the table. That point already existed on there, okay? So it matches up. I want to find two other points, one on each side of the vertex. So I've got negative five and two. And again, this is one, two, three units to the left. So I can go one, two, three units to the right of my axis of symmetry. There are my five points in my graph. I can now draw the parabola, okay? So what we did is we know the y-intercept. We know the axis of symmetry. We found the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex was negative 2. We could have plugged it back in and found the y. would have been very simple to do. But I looked in the calculator, found it, because I knew the x is at negative 2, so I looked at my table, and then I just found other points. Remember, y-intercept was at negative 3, so I can mirror a point across the axis of symmetry. I looked at the table and saw that we were at negative 5, 2, so I reflected that was 3 units left of the axis. I went 3 units right, and there's my parabola right there. Okay, Pretty simple stuff. This is stuff that I'm going to go over with. Uh, in class. Desmos can work for you on this. I can show you that. I like the tables in your calculator a little bit better, but obviously Desmos will tell you points. All right, the last bit of a parabola. You've got to know the max or the min value. All right, so we talked about finding the vertex or at least dealing with the x-coordinate of the vertex. We talked about axis of symmetry. You guys know how to find the y-intercept. Now we need to tell, hey, is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? Well, it's real simple. It's a minimum if the vertex is at the bottom, and it's a maximum if the vertex is at the top. Now, they're going to ask you for maximum or minimum value, and that's going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex, okay? So the x-coordinate of the vertex and the axis of symmetry are related to each other, and the y-coordinate of the vertex is related to the max or min value. So let's jump down to example three, and it says f of x equals negative 4x squared plus 12x plus 18. All right, again, example three, this is on page 222. So it says determine whether this has a max or a min. Well, we already know. This, this definitely has a maximum, and here's why. The negative sign in front of this x squared, or a is negative, flips the graph where it's opening downward, or I call that a frowny face. And so when it's a frowny, that automatically tells me that my, I'm going to have a high point. I'm going to have a graph that looks like this one right here, all right? So if we're gonna deal with max or min value, we gotta go find it, all right? So here's what's going on. I already know that this has a max, but I wanna find what that value is. Well, to find it by hand, I've gotta find the vertex. How do we find the vertex? X equals negative B over 2A. Now that's gonna tell us axis of symmetry, but it's also gonna tell us X coordinate of the vertex. So it's gonna be the opposite of B. Remember, B is the number in front of X, a is the number in front of x squared, so it's going to be the opposite of, b is 12, over 2 times a, a is negative 4, right? Notice that I had to plug in negative 4 for a. So this is negative 12 over negative 8. Everybody catching up? Well, coach, it's not a whole number. If you're not good at that, that's fine. Go to the calculator. Negative 12 divided by negative 8. Math, enter, enter, All right? And you can see that it's 3 halves. Okay, or one and a half, however you want to do it. So this right here, x equals three halves, or x equals one and a half, is the x coordinate of the vertex, okay? It's also the line of symmetry. So I can go right now to where x is one and a half, and I know that my axis of symmetry is going right there, at x equals three halves. It's a guarantee, that's what's going to happen. I know the vertex is also on the axis of symmetry. We've got to find the y coordinate. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go plug it in. So again, keep in mind, I'm finding the maximum. So to find the maximum, here's my next step. I've got to take my equation, f of x equals negative 4x squared plus 12x plus 18, and I'm going to plug in 3 halves for x, or substitute it in. Remember we talked about substitution? You guys have done that. It's fine. Let's do this on the calculator. Now, when you do it in the calculator, make sure you plug your inputs in in parentheses. So I'm going to have negative 4 times, and remember, we're plugging in x. We found x was 3 halves. That's the x coordinate of the vertex. We're finding the y. I'm going to square that plus 12 times our x coordinate of the vertex again plus 18, and we get that y is 27. You're like, man, that's big. That's fine. 
So when we plug those values in, we get 27. So the max value for this problem is 27. You're like, man, how am I going to graph that? Well, let's count by something other than 1s. Let's count by 5s. So there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. We can count by fives. Note, I just put a little five out here and said, hey, we'll count by fives. So I'm going to be a little bit above 25. I already know that the x coordinate of my vertex is three halves. So somewhere right there is the vertex of three halves, 27. Now this graph is going down. We know the y intercept is at 18, 5, 10, 15, 20. So somewhere right in here is the y intercept. I can mirror that point if I'm one and a half to the left. I can go one and a half to the right. And the bottom line is this, I know what my graph is doing. If I was told to graph this, it's doing something like that. We will deal with x-intercepts a little bit later, and that can be your other two points, but we're all right right now doing that. So that's what the graph is doing. Now, the last thing the book asks you to deal with is domain and range. Okay, and you're like, man, this is tough. Well, here's the nice thing. When it's quadratic, domain is going to be all real numbers. Any x that you plug in, you can, in this instance, you can multiply it by 4 and then square it, or actually you would square it first and multiply it by negative 4. Can multiply it by positive 12 and then add 18, any x ever, okay? So it's going to be all reals. Now, some things that you need to see. Our notation here is going to change. Sometimes you're going to see it written as this, from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? So be ready to start changing that notation a little bit, all right? Negative infinity to positive infinity is how you can write it. Now, the range changes, okay? Range means what lies show up on the graph. Well, from here down, they all show up. But above this value right here, they don't show up ever, okay? Because we have a max. So the range is related to your max or min. Since our values are going down from our max, I'm going to write y is less than or equal to our max value, which is 27. When you have a max, you're going to have a range that's less than or equal to whatever your max is. If you have a minimum or a min value, then your range will be greater than or equal to whatever that is, all right? Another way to write this would be from negative infinity to 27, and it stops at 27, so we put a bracket on it because it's included. Just kind of throwing that out there. We're not completely ready to deal with that, but that's what's going on, okay? That's 4-1. That's introducing you to parabolas. We're going to be spending a lot of time with this stuff. If you have questions on any of it, please raise your hand or come see me, and let's get it fixed.